So what's the Newton's second law of motion? Let's go over a set of experiments to learn it. Suppose that this object of mass 2 kg is acted by a net force of 8 newtons. Net force means that we are pulling the object by 8 newtons, but there is no opposing force, like air resistance, like friction, nothing. Actually, the acceleration of this object in practice will be 4 meter per second squared. Try to guess a relationship between 8, 2, and 4. Let's say it's 8 over 2. I will continue my experiment. The same mass, but the force is doubled. Now the net force is doubled, 16 newtons. And we see that acceleration is 8 meter per second squared. In, indeed, the acceleration also is doubled. So let's say it's again 16 over 2. So I'm dividing the total force, the net force, by the mass, and I'm getting the acceleration. Okay, let's triple the force. What do you think about it? Mm, yeah, acceleration is exactly tripled compared to the first. So let's say it's again 24 divided by 2. If I continue, I will find the Newton's second law of motion. He said if the net force, the total force, resultant force acting on, the, on, a, on an object of mass m is f, we can say the acceleration of that object is force divided by mass. If I rearrange the equation by a cross product, I will get f equals ma. So the net force acting on the object will be the product of the mass of that and the acceleration. Force is the resultant force here measured in newtons in SI units, mass in kilogram in SI units, and also the acceleration in meter per second square. How can we define one newton of force? Let's say again F equals MA. Okay, let's say a mass of one kilogram is acted by a force of one newton. So necessarily we expect the acceleration to be one meter per second square because one multiplied by one will be one. So one newton is a force if it acts on an object of a mass one kilogram, it will accelerate for one meter per second square. In 16th century, Galileo tried a lot to define the mass by saying something like, the mass is the amount of matter making an object and so forth, but it was not that precise. Newton did it in a very different way. He said if f equals ma, I can say mass is uh, the quotient of f over a. And actually, if I divide the total resultant force acting on an object by the acceleration it gets, the, the ratio will be the mass. So if I multiply the force by 2, I double the force, the acceleration automatically is doubled. So the mass will be constant. So mass is always the ratio of the force and the acceleration of a mass. F is the net force acting on an object. Can I say the mass is always constant? In classical physics, yes. In figure below, the object of mass 4 kg is pulled by a horizontal force of 100 newtons and opposed by a total resistive force of 80 newtons. So total resistive forces acting on the object would be something like 80 newtons against that 100. Okay, find this acceleration. To find the acceleration, I will go over the Newton's second law of motion. F net equals ma. F net is 100 minus 80. You know that because they are against each other and partially canceling each other. So totally the net force would be just 20 newtons. So 100 minus 80 is equal to mass 4 times acceleration. Acceleration seems to be 20 divided by 4. So it's 5 meter per second square. In figure below, the 4 kilogram object slides down the ramp at constant velocity. Calculate the resultant force acting on it. Uh, guys, be very careful. Velocity is constant. You remember acceleration was delta V over delta T, change in velocity over change in time. As the velocity is constant, there is no delta V. Delta V is zero, no change. So acceleration will be zero. If there is no acceleration according to the Newton's second law of motion, F net is equal to MA. Although we have a mass of four kilogram, but as there is no acceleration, okay, the product will be zero. So the net force acting on the object will be zero. A car of mass 1500 kilogram accelerates uniformly from rest to a speed of 33 meter per second. 
about 100 kilometers per hour. In a time of 11 seconds, calculate the average force acted on the car. You remember F net was MA, okay? F net is the total or net force acting on the object. Actually, this relation uh, explains the instantaneous relation between the force and acceleration. So actually, it's the instantaneous force and it's instantaneous acceleration. Can we use that equation in form of average? Yes, we can. Actually, average net force acting on the object is equal the, to the mass multiplied by the average acceleration. So here I can say m times delta v over delta t also, because average acceleration is delta v over delta t I mentioned. Okay, so let's substitute the values. Here, the total mass of the object is of the car is 1500. Here, delta v is v final minus v initial. v final is 33 and v initial is zero because the object started from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. And the total time interval is 11 seconds mentioned here. So here I can have a three and three multiplied by 1500 would be 4,500 newtons. This is the average force, average net force acting on the object. Is it correct to say objects always accelerate to the same direction as the resultant force acting on them? Let's remember the Newton's second law of motion, F equals ma. We know that mass is a positive scalar and acceleration is a vector. Force also is a vector. As they are connected via a positive quantity, a positive scalar quantity, actually always the direction of the acceleration and direction of the force, we will say, yeah, the answer is yes. Is it correct to say objects always move to the same direction as the resultant force acting on them? Let's see. I have a couple of cars, both moving rightward. Let's say the positive direction is rightward, okay? In the right case, hit this one. Let's say the total net force acting on the object is also rightward. So I expect the acceleration also to be rightward. As the acceleration and velocity have the same direction, the object will speed up. So if the resultant force acting on the object and the motion of the object have the same direction, I can say the object is speeding up. But the left case is different. Let's say the car is braking. So actually the net force acting on the car is leftward, but the car is moving to the right. So basically this car is slowing down. Meanwhile, the acceleration necessary will be against the velocity because it's slowing down. So in this case, as you see, the net force acting on the object and the direction of the motion don't have the same direction. So if they say always, the answer is no. Thank you for watching this video. We will continue with some problem solution and more practice on Newton's second law. Again, thank you because of being with me. See you.